Today we're gonna to talk about putting the ride cymbal and the hi-hat together, uh, specifically the kind of unique voices you can get and the cool kind of energy that you can add to music when you combine these two voices on the kit together uh, in some cool ways. Now the key to getting this kind of thing started is being familiar with the different sounds that you can get out of the ride cymbal and the hi-hat. Specifically on the hi-hat, if you close it really tight and you hit the top of the cymbal with the tip of your stick, it's gonna sound drastically different than if you loosen a little bit and you hit the side of the cymbals with the shoulder of your stick, right? It's gonna be like a looser, sloshier sound, I call it. Same with the ride cymbal, the different voices that you can get from that, like the tip of the stick on the outside versus the shoulder of the stick next to the bell uh, or right on the bell, or just kind of bashing the, the very edge of it to get like a washy, crashy thing, right? So being familiar with these sounds that you can get out of these two voices on the kit uh, and having full control over which one you choose to use, um, these things are important before you decide to put these things together. Uh, so you, in other words, you want to remove any degree of randomness from your playing. You don't want things to be the way they are or sound the way they do simply because this is just how you happen to be doing it, right? You want to be in full control. You want to play exactly what you want to play, right? Uh, but once you get control of these and you put them together, you can come up with some pretty cool phrasing and again, add some really cool energy to the music. There's lots of drummers that have done this kind of thing over the years um, and a couple of the examples that I noticed and were really inspired by over the years um, were guys like Neil Peart uh, from Rush, uh, who I first noticed did it on a track called The Camera Eye from Moving Pictures 1981. Um, it's a really long song, um, and in the middle they kind of do this breakdown where Neil kind of comes back in with this really cool groove that's 16th note bass, and he's playing like the E's and the U's with his left hand, and he's playing the ands with his right hand on the cymbal for a very syncopated kind of groove. Another cool example uh, that I thought was really cool back in the day was on Living Colors debut recording, William Calhoun on drums. There's some really cool tunes uh, on that CD, <laughs> slash tape, slash record, slash whatever. Um, there was one track on there called Middleman, uh, and Will does a really cool thing where he plays um, the ands uh, on his ride cymbal, and he's opening and closing the hi-hat, um, and he's doing it with the bass drum together and without the bass drum. Uh, so it's the difference between like tss, tss, and like pss, pss, you know, because you get to put that bass drum on top of it, it sounds completely different. Um, and actually does it all over that record, it sounds really cool. So here's me kind of demonstrating like a, a version of that. Steve Gadd also came with some really creative ways to put the hi-hat and ride cymbal together, um, putting the downbeat or the upbeat on the ride and the offbeats with his left hand while keeping that bass drum and backbeat feeling good and relaxed while putting these things together. Now when the dam really broke with this stuff was kind of in the 90s when Jazz Fusion was everywhere and guys like Weckl and Dennis Chambers uh, kind of bashed the door down and, uh, and played a lot of music uh, putting the ride cymbal and the hi-hat together in a lot of cool ways, um, particularly with a lot of like double stroke oriented rudiments uh, with the hi-hat closed nice and tight for a really clean kind of thing. Um, some really amazing grooves from Dennis uh, and Weckl and lots of other guys too I'm not mentioning. 
Uh, these are the just kind of musical examples that stuck with me over the years. Um, so feel free to check those guys out for that stuff. Um, for me, I've kind of taken this concept and kind of done my own thing with it, uh, utilizing the same principles. Um, and so I thought I would share um, my favorite things to do with these two voices. One of the things I like doing while I'm on the ride cymbal uh, is doing like a two note phrase on my hi-hat. The first note is stomped with my foot for a clean kind of chick. Uh, and the second hit is with my left hand uh, on the uh. uh. I've got another video about this on my channel, uh, so check that out, but just really quick, here's what that sounds like. Another fun thing I like to do is take a groove um, that has ghost notes in it on the snare drum and instead of playing them as ghost notes, you can play them on the hi-hat, close the hi-hat nice and tight, maybe play those notes a little bit louder, okay? Um, if you have existing grooves um, that you're used to playing with ghost notes, you can kind of refresh those grooves and make them sound completely different um, using this method. So I'll start with a real basic example of a groove and I'll show the ghost notes, then I'll move my left hand on the hi-hat, uh, close the hi-hat nice and tight and put those same ghost notes on the hi-hat. Then I'll start to mix in the other stuff we talked about, like hitting the hi-hat while it's open and closing it, um, doing the same thing and putting the bass drum on top of it for the pss, pss um, doing the chick on the end and then hitting the hi-hat while it's closed the 16th before, like we talked about. Mixing all that stuff together um, sounds like this. Here's a clip of me playing a 3-4, um, 6-8 kind of groove with a trio called Altered uh, a few years back, incorporating some of the busier right cymbal hi-hat stuff we've been talking about. play that groove up to speed uh, and then I'll see if I can play it slow. Here's that. A lot of drummers don't think about how the way you stomp your hi-hat during a ride cymbal groove changes the feel of that groove. Uh, if you play the same basic groove on the ride cymbal, and if you uh, play tight chicks with your left foot to the quarter note um, versus kind of loose and sloshy to the quarter note, it sounds completely different. Same thing goes for the ends. If you're, if you're chicking the ends nice and tight with your left foot, if you're kind of sloshing the ends with the left foot, the same groove will feel totally different. Um, and I would encourage folks to, to A, get used to this kind of thing, have control over it, and B, use it to your advantage, right? 
So let me play an example of the same kind of groove and just stomping my foot in different ways on the downbeat and on the upbeat and notice how that changes the feel of the groove. Another fun thing I like to do uh, between the ride sim and the hi-hat is uh, stomping the hi-hat with my left foot as part of a little, uh, as part of a, of a little phrase actually um, between the hi-hat uh, and the snare drum say, usually involving like back beats and ghost notes. Um, this is kind of jazzy stuff where you play like, you know, you stomp it and you play like a group of two or three and then you stomp it again. Um, that kind of stuff, but it's totally applicable to uh, straight music with back beats, straight eights versus swung eights. I mean. Um, so let me see if I can stumble on a couple examples of that. So hopefully this has given you some different ideas and maybe a little inspiration on how to put the hi-hat and ride cymbal together. Uh, my name is Steve Holmes. We've got tons of videos and do a lot of live streams on my channel. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and spread the word if you like what you see, okay? Um, I'm gonna play out with just some different uh, improvisations with ride cymbal and hi-hat stuff, all right? But remember, this is not a toy, all right? Don't hurt anybody with this stuff. See you next time. method.